So welcome to the debate. Um, thank you, me, for your interview. It was very interesting. Uh, we have been trying to be as polyvocal as possible in the sense that we've been trying also to, to sort of have a very a variety of, of guests that really, really ha are doing very different things. And, and uh, because we really wanted to sort of create a conversation that, was, that we didn't know where it could go. So today is one of a very exciting day because um, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with this debate. Uh, I can just read, as I do every day, the um, theme of, uh, of the day, which is today we have invited, uh, of course, we have me, we, uh, we have Paul Castagno, and uh, we have asked also um, Marik and Halle to join us on the panel. You will meet Marik and tomorrow, probably. When is your presentation, uh, Marik? And is, yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow you will hear the interview. Uh, with Mike. Uh, so the theme of the day is how new strategies for production impact the aesthetics in film, theater, and TV. Uh, and then I was also listening to your, uh, to your interview, and um, this is it. I mean, we are, let's, let's start from the context. This is a theater school, right? Uh, and schools exist when they have something to teach. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's um, it's the, the 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 existence of an institution is is also about that there is a competence in this institution, and a specificity within an institution, and this is also about theaters and all of that. Um, there is a uh, there is a big change that has happened with the with the new technologies that is very similar to what you describe with the printing of books. That's what now we're here in the Lutheran part of Europe. We would probably not have the Lutheran part of Europe, but just <laughs> Catholicism. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> we would probably not have the Lutheran part of Europe without people, you know, reading the Bible in their own languages uh, and not just in Latin. Um, so uh, at the same time, uh, culture and art, especially in Europe, but I mean globally, has been in the hands of distributors. Uh, and for distributors, I also put these institutions like schools. So you have had state or important universities and, and insti institutions doing education. You had national theaters, you had the film funds, you've had the uh, film distributors, arenas and, 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 uh, uh, and uh, institutions with the power to say, this idea will be realized, this idea is worth it, this idea is art. Uh, and then at some point you have uh, this shift where everybody can sort of reach everybody and share their ideas and, and uh, where you sort of, you don't need to be approved or to be told that you have talent or to be told that your idea is interesting. You can just work on things and then the world will decide. So you have this direct contact. We're living in a time, just that you know, where we have in the Western world the first democracy that is now having a government with a, with a party that is online. I don't know if we are completely aware of what's happening right now, but Italy just have now a prime minister that has been chosen by a, gov by a party with that, that doesn't exist. It's just on Facebook, okay? <laughs> and where people just, you know, can every day say what they think, they can sort of fire people in the par parliament, that, you know, it's it's total direct democracy attempt. This, this, this party is the biggest party in Italy, which is the third biggest economy in Europe, right? And it's now in the government. So this is a, probably much bigger than what we think. So my question is, uh, when it comes to acting, is about the risk of amateurs and the problem of what is the line between freedom and the total lack of competence. Or, uh, and I would like to hear a bit about about that, about sort of if you, if you have uh, some ideas, because you also work in in, in in an institution where you, you know, you have to teach competence. I mean, you write books. I mean, what is, you made an academy, right? I mean, so what is, uh, what is the line between uh, to total freedom and, uh, and uh, leaving the audience to sort of uh, decide what is worth it and taking care of competence, passing competence forward, so don't, ha don't let the art to become just something which is amateur-like. Yeah. OK. 
Can you say something about yeah, that? Yeah, I, th I think starting with the institution versus, versus amateurs, mm -hmm. I think that it's a vehicle that need to coexist mm -hmm. um, because within we can't be without the institutions, really. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't just have amateurs. And me coming specifically from the film industries, mm -hmm. when you went from 35 millimeter film moving into digital format, everyone thought this is gonna, it's going to ruin films. We're never going to have a quality film ever again because it's all going to be amateurs out there putting mm -hmm. films up. And we can now see that it, it's actually driving the quality forward because of the possibilities and how we can work with films. So the films have just become better and better and people want to raise the quality. But then on the other hand, you have the amateurs and anyone. We've never had such freedom mm. of both speech and opportunities, and we're certainly grabbing them in the Western world. Mm. Um, so I think it's a coexistence, and the one doesn't necessarily damage the other. They, they need to... It's all part of being human mm. somehow, and the way we, we've always had institutions that have set rules, but then we always have individuals who want to break those rules mm. and, and do the opposite, which drives new influences mm. and makes the institution more flexible and having debates like this. But yeah. do, you think, uh, do you think that, for example, there is a, we had the, also like with the students in the third year, there is this demand of helping the students to sort of being ready for the market. And there is a, when there is a sort of rhetoric that gets established, uh, it's very easy to give up to these rhetorics. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. like to, to say, okay, it's like this, so people have to be prepared to this. But it's also possible to say, well, it doesn't have to be like this. So what do you think? Do you think that institutions like, um, like this, that, that try to develop quality in acting, should just give up and give a lot of space in their curriculum to uh, becoming good in, 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 in being sort of entrepreneur, being like a business person? or? Or do you think that we should sort of uh, resist because this can sort of become a problem in the teaching of the quality of the competence of acting? It's a, two very interesting questions. One, uh, I can address, I was uh, formerly director of the uh, School of Theater at Ohio University, which is a p huge school of theater. And we had an affiliation with the Cincinnati Playhouse in the park, which is a Lort resident theater. And the artistic director, uh, maybe it was first or second time, we'd have our graduate students would go there in their third year, you know, as interns and perform and get their equity cards and so, so forth. And he said, Paul, the purpose of the MFA education in acting is not to learn how to be a good actor, but to learn how to audition. And that, that kind of struck me. It, it's, it's, it's how you can come across in that, you know, in what you're talking about, I mean, in, in a very, very um, quick, brief, uh, can you show authenticity, for example? How, auth how, how authentic? And that's a very difficult place to get to. On the other hand, uh, what we're finding, and for example, because I have sons, I've mentioned this other, at other venue, venues here, that um, you know, they'll be watching, there are very popular YouTube videos. People get YouTube presences and with a level that's, you know, jejun or sophomoric or idiotic, you know, I mean, the level of humor and so forth. <clears throat> but uh, they're very, very popular. Um, and, and, it's, and it's quite amateurish, but by getting so many hits on YouTube, then you will get advertisers and you can end up making a substantial, a substantial living that way. On the other hand, you have Jordan Peterson. I, mentioned, I was mentioning this uh, just in the hallway who, um, you know, he's, he's have, has this sort of mantra to young men, um, sp particularly in America, white men who feel uh, um, in a sense of kind of backlash or oppression um, in terms of political correctness and how, how a man has to be in the world today. And Jordan Peterson is, through YouTube, has got this huge, huge following. And, um, and, so, and so you have, I think, a, a diverse array, but it's performative. All of this stuff is performative. Um, you know, from the auditioner to the, the, the politico who's making statements and gathering a following. Hmm. I mean, that's also some ideological idea because uh, you, you, you come here and you talk very much about, the, also Frederick yesterday, about authenticity, right? Uh, which then it becomes a sort of expectation also when it comes to acting training, you know, like to sort of learn to be authentic, like if... Uh, 
this premise, we could problematize this premise. Like, what does it mean to be authentic? Or, or what is, does it mean to be performative? Or what is theatricality? Or, you know, so what is, uh, can, can you expand a bit about this idea? Because you, you, I have the feeling that, you know, often when, when we talk about these things, uh, a lot of stage art or film things that sort of touch the competence of acting, we also express a lot of um, acting ideas without completely being uh, aware of that. Can you say something more about uh, what does it mean to be authentic and, and how do you achieve to be authentic? You want to say something? I think you are authentic when you talk without uh, <laughs> thinking too much or just having an agenda with what you want to say, really, but uh, talking because you're feeling something. Mm. And um, what I'm feeling when you're talking about uh, if uh, art education shall spend time on teaching the um, chil uh, children, <laughs> the students, how to, how to market themselves, I think that is totally wrong. I think that uh, the world needs uh, so much... Um, so much art and it's uh, how you should prepare them for the marketing thing is by teaching them that there are structures and a lot of them are really dangerous and and um, and uh, horrible like Trump is president and now he Kardashian is saying something to him and he does some I mean it's crazy and it's really something we have to relate on and, and it's really um, yeah, you have to teach the students about these structures so they can go out there with awareness and navigate because this society is really hard to navigate in. And people really want contact with other people. Like, that's why uh, this uh, YouTube guy has so many followers. Of course, you want to have contact with other people. That's how we are built. We want to understand and relate. And But um, personally, I feel that every time I've had a uh, really deep, uh, meaningful time of my life. It's been with, often forced together with other students living in Lofoten in two years and having to relate to them and don't having all the opportunities in the world, but having to meet them every day, having to uh, think, oh God, I can't work with him. And then seeing something wonderful come out of that person. I think that's really, uh, to, to get deep, into another person is really fulfilling for me. And that's, that can be hard with, with the screens and with not getting reactions. So I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of scared, but I've also had like a homepage and, uh, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm a bit scared of. <laughs> but isn't that a reason then for, for the students to, to have a part where they get used to a situation when they actually have to present themselves and, and and in the competition between other actors, even if it's a very professional stage show or film, they will need to actually sell themselves in, in effect. That's the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial part of the actor, which, of course, if they're a, a very confident actor, will be easier. But for many of the actors in my group, the one thing they want to practice is to prepare before an auditioning and to go in and communicate with a casting director or director because they feel very nervous about it. So it's not like a commercial sellout of the actor as such, it's just pre being prepared for going in but that well, me, but that and get the part. In America mm -hmm. though, I mean, for example, you don't audition in front of people much anymore. It's all by tape. So you're gonna just send your tape out and then you're going to get a call, or you're just going to get the gig. It's that's so it's almost like you can't. You, there's no other way to do it. You, but, you, know, you yeah. see, so I mean, what you're doing almost has to. It's ineluctable. I mean, you have to basically create some kind of video. And we have this class called Acting for Camera and Audition Techniques. So that's what the student. You know, we have the camera, maybe another camera. You get the angles. You can split them up. You edit it. You put together the audition tape. Uh, and then you send it out because the casting agents don't want, they, they, they don't want, you don't go on a casting call anymore. So it's it become a reality uh, that the actor just has to deal with. But I don't think that's entirely true because I think that some, I mean, and that's what the nice thing when you talked about that the actor can themselves <coughs> make productions and put them out there. I think that is... Uh, for me as a director who's going to work with people, it's I would get so much more respect from someone showing something 
wonderfully work <laughs> on on online then then um I don't work work with the casting agent. I mean, I think there's a lot of artists that don't like those kind of structures. Like mm. uh, you talked about yesterday, also that directors can feel they are forced into being this powerful person that you don't f feel like you want to be. Like the way you started was with your friends and your family and your siblings and playing and making stuff. So the thing that I want you and I don't want the thirty of you. I don't like that feeling. Mm. Um, and I think that um, if we don't want the society to, to be so much like that, we can do structures that are different. We can get together two directors and five actors and say, we spend one year now, we make five feature films, and we work on bars, and we do... Uh, I mean, we can do totally other kind of structures, and that can an uh, actor, if an uh, actor... I think it, I will be much more impressed if an actor says that, like, I want to work... Uh, all day <laughs> for half a year with you because I think your work is beautiful than that I've seen that this person has been has really good um, yeah um. well you know following up on what you said mm -hmm. I, I, sh I saw a show in, in Milan at uh, Trauma de Torre three years ago where um, it's from Friulia um, speaking in the Frulans uh, language and um, it was a web show that they had created, it became a very, very popular web show and um, hugely successful. But, and two of the actors uh, would interact with the YouTube videos, so they would be, it was very interesting, because they, they, it was very economical, because they could take the show on the road with screens, right, and then interact with, with themselves on the screen and the others and so on, and it was comedy, and they could do stand-up and back and forth. But that kind of integration in media and live performance, which was quite polyvocal, actually, mm -hmm. Um, also is uh, maybe some, some kind of a compromise here because uh, you're reaching a large public, but it's economically feasible too. You know, you're not being, bringing, you know, huge crews and uh, 15 actors and so forth. But I think we are, I mean, you said something also about <coughs> um, our brain when exposed to images. I think, I think we, we have some words, like for example, that we need to sort of, uh, sort of problematize in a new way because like for example what does it mean to be creative is to be creative to be like frederick said to be able to sort of collage and be in this sort of multitasking sort of polyvocal way of 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 of, of being in touch with things and being exposed to a lot of things and respond to that or or it's to be creative to to be sort of uh, to don't have all these inputs, but to sort of uh, fill up and create create meanings out of of things around you in the world. I mean, I could argue uh, that it's dangerous for the brain to be exposed to images because it stops the true creativity. Like, and and I could go the full Steiner, uh, you know, pitch about that, and that I would, for example, I'm very my 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 kids they're far away from everything that is technology because I want them to go on trees and and interpret the world, and I want them to make their own meanings and create their own hierarchies about this, because I'm afraid that all too many images will stop their cre creativity. And uh, so I think it's interesting for us as uh, institutions that work with creativity to, to dis describe creativity and, and try to understand what is creativity. Because uh, when we sit in the auditions, for example, we, we try, oh, this person is creative. What does it mean to be creative? It's in the sense of Frederick, for example, to be able to uh, pick up a lot of the elements and create and assemble them and create a new hierarchy and give them a new meaning, or it is to sort of uh, being so open and in contact with the environment around you that you can sort of, uh, sort of um, create in something from yourself or respond in, a, in, a, in an original way. Uh, do you have something? I mean, do you have something to say about this? And, and I mean, also, yeah. for example, in, about writing and, and yeah. Well, part of it is is related to talent. Uh, you know that word talent. Uh, it, it, what is talent? You know, and, and is talent how is talent related to creativity? And is talent the the ability to see things that others can't see, or to visualize an entity before it's taken place, and then to be go ahead and to realize that entity. Uh, in, a, in a fully invested way, uh, I think that's part of it. I think that, that talent and creativity kind of converge, um, you know, to create new or to create new or, or novel forms, like we saw, we saw yesterday with you know Frederick's work. 
Um, so you're taking what's going on societally and you're kind of, it's, you're kind of, it's kind of going through you. You're the artist, the creative artist, so it's filtering through you and then uh, through your talent, which is, is part of your, uh, your force. I mean, maybe the talent is part of a force, but it's a feeling about it and that can't maybe, maybe it's inexplicable, but then it's, it's able to put it into form. And so once it reaches form and it doesn't become uh, too abstract or like you can't handle, then it becomes uh, art, I think. That's so I think the creativity is related to this idea of a vision, and, but it's also related to the idea of the talent of the individual who's able to kind of converge it, or it could be within a group context in which the, like the collective things where there's a synergy that ultimately, that ultimately uh, crescendos, if you will, and, and creates this, uh, this entity called art. Mm. I really like the, co the combination of the talent there because I'm thinking mm. from a business perspective and talking about the artist as an entrepreneur, um, it's actually very closely knit mm. to being creative is almost knowing the known but taking a step away from that to explore mm. and what comes to you, to your mind in any field whatsoever, mm. um, combined with talent, that's when it can take off mm. to, for some people, an entrepreneurial level because they start um, making a business out of it. And of course, as an art form, that's on the opposite side because we've never been allowed to make money from art, really. Mm. Um, so it was just the, the reference to talent, creativity is actually quite closely knit to being entrepreneurial as well. Mm. Like, you do, do you, because you work also very sort of, <coughs> I mean, I think it was very interesting to, to put you together in the same panel. That's why, <laughs> that's why I thought about it. I shouldn't lean away <laughs> from you. <laughs> uh, because, uh, because in a way, I feel that uh, there are in the two extremes, they, they are working in a very similar way, in the sense that if you describe uh, the, this entrepreneurial aspect, or if you describe a sort of uh, way of making film which goes out of the classical structures, you're still out of the classical structures, which are, there are institutions that are financed, that have the economical power to decide what is good, what is not good, what is quality, what is not quality, what is talent, what is not talent, what should be worth it to be seen or not seen. And this is, and this, and there is under that, there is a need to sort of get out of these structures. Some people do it in a more sort of, in trying to create more sort of, um, to cultivate their own their own originality and their own artistic vision, getting out of this system. Or on the other side, you have also the entrepreneurial aspect that you try to move forward uh, faster because you don't have to go through this uh, sort of uh, maze of power structures, right? Mm. So that's why I thought it was a bit interesting mm. to, to have you together. My dad again. always said, you've got to learn the rules so you can break them later. Mm. But if you haven't learned the rule, you'll always feel a bit insecure and you might mm -hmm. not even, you might think that you're breaking mm. the rules and you're not actually even breaking them. So I, I think education is obviously mm. um, absolutely necessary. But you would say maybe make your own rules. Yeah, I hated that sentence. <laughs> you hated life. that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I've just felt like I've had some teachers that said uh, there, mm, there are no rules, you are here, we mm. trust you and you mm. make uh, m you made a beautiful film getting into the school mm. continue working mm. and we're here i think we, i think we see this because uh, you brought up trump and kardashian which is perfect they're both reality show folks and the idea of the breaking the rules i mean that was the idea why he got elected that he's going to break all those so he comes in and, and breaks the rules but in a sense degrades uh, through lies and and you know uh, division and so forth and in a sense, takes pleasure in degrading the office, in, in degrading the talent, and degrading the creativity of people, and and bringing it into this this place, and th then having a, a groundswell of support. So at that level of support, there's also uh, levels of entertainment, which is what uh, I referred to before with the, these kind of YouTube things that are referring to like uh, support of the base, for example, the the, the, the kind of jokes that are you know, and not, uh, it would make one squirm, you know, and, but that I have a, a broad repeal. So on the other hand, with, without that, that sense of, uh, I, I would say propriety, but I mean, if, if you have someone who's, who's in an office like that and, 
everything was degraded and lies were turned. So false narratives, you know, we're talking about authenticity. What we're just seeing is one false narrative being created. He just creates a false narrative every other day about something and then people converge to, to agree with it or there's, there's collision to separate from it. But I, it's going to be very confusing to, to those coming up. What, you know, what narrative to, how, how does one present oneself in, in a world in which there's so much uh, uh, falseness, there's so, so many lies and, and it doesn't seem to matter. So uh, I think that's part of it, part of the sense of, we, we always think of the art as something we want to elevate, you know, uh, we, want to, we want to make it greater, we want to make our theater evolve, but we're in a state now where things are devolving, you know, things are getting worse. And uh, so what is, you know, what is the artist, mm -hmm. How do we stand face to face? You know, up I think that. I think about you talked about. Uh, I mean, The Wire. I just saw it like uh, one year ago. I'm <laughs> totally not in tune with the the world there. But I mean, about creativity. I think that is maybe something I feel is uh, really effective and things you should do in school. That to um, because. Um, a lot of people don't feel that they really can influence the society so much, or the, the, it's e big companies are running the politicians, and they're not. They're, where can you put your energy into changing something if you want to do that? And um, when they made that show, I mean, it must be so fulfilling to make that kind of show, just r revealing the structures in the school, the structures in the police, and. And then I, I would imagine that they didn't think so much about themselves, like, oh, God, how will they think about me when I'm acting this? Because it's something yeah. bigger goal with it. Like, mm -hmm. okay, to hell with if they think I'm a bad actor. I'm doing something important. And that is, um, I think that is really good for, because then you spend less time on wondering how am I perceived? I'm um, being mm. loved now. And... And you are being loved because what you do is making the whole world uh, easier to navigate in. And also, like, <coughs> the people you are against, in a way, like the policemen in the wire who are doing terrible things, you, you, feel, you feel with them. And you, like, I saw some behind-the-scenes things when he was talking about that a lot of policemen have had his job and were coming to him and saying, God, thank you for making that por portray. Um, and that, um, yeah. Can you say something about, uh, just very briefly about the way you develop your your, your material and then what kind of what kind of actor is is the actors you like to work with? I mean, uh, I thought about it earlier because I thought w w uh, sometimes I see an actor and I think, oh God, I really want to work with that person. And that has al always been theater experiences mm. for me. Mm. Like I saw one man in Stockholm. He was a bit older, and he worked with the free group, like mm. with young people just mm. at the school. And, I, and he was so into it, like just mm. screaming on the floor. And I thought, God, fantastic person doing this. Like he's uh, 10 years older, and mm. he's kind of uh, doing this. Mm. He's very interesting. So then I just asked him to play a role in my film mm. without testing him anymore, just seeing what he was actually doing. And and also, yeah, three other cases. It has been experiencing them live on stage, mm -hmm. and then feeling like, oh my god, I want mm -hmm. to work with that person. Mm. Do you think that maybe it's uh, f maybe what what is something we lack is in in? in uh, uh, I just say one thing more because I applied for stage school uh, three years, and mm. I got to the final round. And I felt that was so, uh, I felt like uh, that was my, my main, uh, I didn't get in. So I have audition. Uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that to other people. So that's maybe stupid in a way. But, but I, if I have audition, I say, uh, I give everyone a part. Like, okay, but you can play a small part in the <laughs> other scene <laughs> if you want to. So I, but I, I don't like that audition process. Thing. No. Yeah. But do you think maybe one of the, one of the solutions could be um, uh, to create more sort of uh, sort of starting a dialogue about the, the ethics of, of the job and and I mean because there are a lot of things that 
the competence in, in knowing about uh, how to use the internet is essential. It's like, um, yeah, we have to, and it's a very powerful instrument and, and a uh, very democratic potential instrument. But I think we are maybe underestimating uh, to, to sort of create an ethical dialogue about how we use these medias and also an ethical dialogue about what the art is and what the art, art, art should be. Don't you think and maybe we, th we think too much, uh, generally, we think too much competence without ethics? What do you have to say about this? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're well, we've been really compromised. We, a lot of talk about Facebook, you know, with trolling and bots and so forth that <laughs> swung the election in 2016 in America. It was clear how things were being manipulated. So, yeah, there's a general ethical vacuum in terms of just not knowing what's real, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing where it's being generated, not knowing if that person projecting is an actual person or uh, some figment or some way of getting your identity, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, are you t so would you talk about in terms of how the artist presents themselves? On I'm this? talking about the fact that there is a technocratic aspect. I mean, this is, in Scandinavia is extremely technocratic land. You have to measure everything. Now you've learned this portion of this skill, and then you will learn the portion of that skill. This is also a very American system. Mm -hmm. I come from, for example, from a Latin country which has a more sort of human, it had at least, a more humanistic approach. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Italy, if you can read Latin and, and read philosophy, you can't be an engineer. Oh, because an yeah. engineer has to be first a human being, and mm -hmm. then can build bridges. Mm -hmm. It was the, the old attitude, right? Now they're, they're changing this also down there because there is this sort of, okay, how can we get people to, to be good in learning this competence and doing this job? And I, and I see also this in, in the arts, for example, like uh, that there is a sort of uh, skill obsession and a lot of workshops also, yes. yeah, also for writing, also for acting. They're very much sort of, uh, you know, skills, skills, learn how to do this. And then the ethical aspect about the competence is your problem, the mm -hmm. way the way you relate to the role that mm -hmm. you're trying to train for. Don't you think that maybe one of the solutions to sort of close this gap between uh, sort of uh, the entrepreneurial aspect and the uh, sort of artistic aspect would be to sort of include more a discourse on ethics I while learning so. skills? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's been politicized on both the left and the right in America. Uh, in other words, um, everything is seen through a bias, mm. either from the right or the left. <clears throat> so it seemed like the ethical standpoint would have to be somewhere that precluded, you know, precluded some sense of bias. Mm. Um, but the very fact that how somebody presents themselves, if they're a person of color or a person, uh, a white person, whatever it might be, gay, uh, that immediately is a signifier, you know, mm. that, that it has its own constituents, and and so the perceptions of ethics become filtered through those lenses of, you know, where the perspective of that individual is vis-a-vis -vis, uh, any other individual. Mm. Uh, that's I think it's. Be I mean, we'd like to get to I think an area where where it's it's a, a, a sort of a neutral thing. I mean, where ethics is something that it's it just is, but it's become so polarized, mm. you know in terms of how things are, are perceived. Like for example, my, my son was in a diversity class at Cornell and uh, people were telling the class, sit down, we don't wanna hear what you say, you're a white guy, you know? I mean, so he was felt thwarted in his, trying to have a discourse with his fellow classmates uh, about something. You see, on the other hand, you'd have the, the opposite situation happening maybe uh, in, uh, in, in another university from the other perspective. So you get, uh, you get this, this situation right now in America where it's very difficult to find that, uh, that, that lack of bias from either the right or the left, you know. Like for example, if you, say, if you spoke up in, in the Southern school and you said something anti, like fundamentalism, fundamental Christianity, for example, that's so far to the right wing now, how do, how do those values of, that you are spouting have anything to do with the gospel? And then you point something in the gospel and, and so then the person would become irate 
and maybe call you a bigot, you would get it, so you would get into an argument. You, it's, it's very difficult to find that area where you can actually have a kind of straight conversation about mm. this. I think it's really, I mean, ethics is important from you know, <coughs> childhood for families to bring in to their children to definitely the institutions or any mm. school you go to because um, referring back to Tala's conversation about her ethics in writing, it's mm. really important for her to stick to her ethics. She might write a beautiful piece of work, but it's not, you know, what her core values is about or her ethics, so she can't release it. She'd rather scrap a beautiful piece of work because she doesn't actually want to put it out there. Mm. And for the actor, we've been talking a lot about this, um, and I'm really pleased to hear that, that they do list their core values mm. and, and what they think is important for them in mm. the world as a person, what they want to do and take a stand as an actor as well. Um, so I think every part needs to think about that, and, mm. and that's you know production side, directors, producers, film industry. We all have a responsibility there to mm. keep the ethics uh, up and know where we stand. Mm. Art may be the place that that's where the last refuge, you know, of ethics. Mm. But th but I think it's it's easier maybe to make a list than to actually living by it because, um, for example, this guy, older guy, and uh, forty <laughs> making that thing on stage in Stockholm where I saw him, he he's probably really 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 poor. Like uh, to make that kind of choice is to don't have the social things that everyone else around you your age have. And then you live with that, uh, and and that is um, in our kind of structure, our, our capitalist society. It's it's uh, it must be really really hard for actors to, yeah. What jobs should I take? What should I not take? And and then I think to be if you are, because I guess the f the focus can be like how why should they choose me? But it's also which director do or which producer or which. Do distributor do you choose like what what do you find interesting being made because the chance of getting a job by someone that you just take me take me take me uh, it's much more chance if it's someone you really really respect and like the particular work to and and then it's just see all all new Norwegian films the, like see them many times or I mean you can do a lot of if you really want to work in film I think that is uh, yeah, who do you want to work with in film? Or well, an, an issue we have right now in casting, uh, it's, it, for example, uh, if I wanted to cast an African-American actor or a woman in a man's role, uh, copyright law is restricted. So you can't cast the best actor for that particular role because uh, of a copyright restriction that becomes so severe. We, 10 years ago, you had what we could oh call blind God. casting, you know, where you just cast the best actor. But now th there's restrictions, you know, uh, and productions are getting shut down. Uh, lawsuits are taking place. For example, casting a woman in a man's role. Oleana was a big case a few years ago uh, where the, the, the woman character, Carol, was cast as a, a man. It was going to be uh, a male-to-male -male relationship, and uh, Mamet shut, shut it down. Uh, but this is happening more and more where the uh, you open up. It it's almost seems unethical, you know. Uh, an ethical demand, um, particularly when you're working with, uh, you know, student actors or something. What you want to give uh, people an opportunity. Who's shutting it down? Uh, David Mamet. Is it the uh, the copyright the, the agencies uh, who are controlling the copyrights to oh to the production mm -hmm. rights? Okay. Yeah. It's really tragic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very bad. I I just want to check the time because. Uh, we have like in five minutes to open to, to some questions. If you want to ask something, then we, yes, we have some questions up there. Uh, yeah, uh, me? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, just a question for me. Uh, you, hi, uh, thank you for the talk and uh, also the, the talk. Um, you were talking about the, the importance of ethics and that you had all these um, uh, interesting conversations uh, we, we're during the workshops and stuff. and. Uh, uh, obviously, I, I wasn't at the workshop, so I, I, I don't know what to talk about there. Uh, but I was just thinking a bit about the, um, uh, the presentation uh, you had. And uh, it seems to me that, uh, not that you uh, in any way promote an ethical view, but that you at least don't 
don't quite problematize um, some of the aspects with at least uh, YouTubing as a platform and YouTubing as um, uh, all the products that uh, the artistic products that uh, get out on uh, YouTube as a platform and you, you are talking about all these uh, very popular channels obviously uh, PewDiePie has, has his amount of criticism for being racist and uh, so forth and also uh, but, but a lot of those um, prank and comedy uh, YouTubers that you uh, maybe you don't celebrate them but at least you talk about the, them as success stories, I would place at best in an ethical grey zone. You get, get like uh, Logan Paul visiting the uh, suicide forest in Japan and a lot of, uh, yeah, uh, uh, also a lot of, it seems like there, there's not really a, a very upper limit to how cruel you can get to go viral. And do you, do you I, problem I, problem I think when we... When we had the conversation before the talk, um, Ariston wanted me to um, make clear what vlogging was yeah. and what YouTuber were. So these, these are obviously not uh, normal, you know, that's not what we are aiming for and what an actor might want to aim for. It was more a description of the phenomena, phenomena and how massive it is, how big YouTube is and what can happen. Uh, what I want to tell actors is that there is a new stage for you that you can make use of. And we have actually discussed a lot about how we go out there and, and what do we do with the authenticity and our own person and do we adapt and I can't answer those questions because it's very individual. Um, so I'm not saying you should go out, out and be PewDiePie. I don't want you to be PewDiePie. <laughs> um, what I'm saying is that there's an opportunity to be grabbed and then yes, ethics definitely come in um, and you've got to be careful but protect yourself and um, and just go out to to a small group first, so you know what you're doing. I don't know if that's helpful as an answer. It's, I think it's an interesting point, though, because the the institutions like YouTube and Facebook are, are themselves unethical. I mean, they're just saying whatever comes in comes in. Until recently, right? So the stuff that was coming in wasn't being monitored as being fake, real, or what the intent was, or malice. Anything, almost anything, could get get through the. Uh, basically the interface, so. So you reckon that the, the actual use should also be inherently uh, ethical, unethical, or? It's just, a, a, it's like amoral, it's like aethical, you know? It's like, it's, it's just what it is. It's a, um, a platform that is out there, but without sanctions or, you know, so inflammatory stuff can get out, um, white supremacist, all that kind of stuff, racist stuff can get on there. Yeah, sure. um, you know, and without it being monitored. And then the other thing is that if it's censored, then it's not free. So, you know, it's that ethical dilemma, actually, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, that's what I was saying before. I mean, the moment it's only, is this relationship between competence and the personal how much power we give to the, in, uh, the individual choice. I mean, how much ethic is only a personal choice and how much, you know, um, for example, this party in Italy, I understand that a lot of people were frustrated with Italian politics. I mean, it's not very hard to be frustrated with Italian politics, but, uh, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that you have to put the person that barely has gone through high school to run a country. Do you understand? I mean, it's like you also need some competence yeah. to do that. So it's, it's a scary sort of uh, feedback when you also open for total unmoral or unethical mm -hmm. platforms or, or discourse. But we have the last questions and then we have to... to uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to say something about... Because a lot of things you talk about now is uh, the question of how to be seen and uh, uh, how to pick best actors was also something you talked about. And then Marikin uh, uh, said something about uh, how they work in the school, that you are together and it's you, you can't choose. And I was just, um, I was just uh, thinking about this, how much, um, uh, how much we hate all these structures of having uh, these awkward audition situations and also for me as director to try to 
to, to I, I am also like, I want to do this audition thing. Uh, and uh, there's so much uh, uncomfortable feelings related to this, these structures of selling yourself as, uh, as an entrepreneur, as an actor, or as a director. Uh, and I think we might underestimate the power in this uncomfortableness that we can go away from it somehow and choose not to think about uh, artists as good or bad, but but to to choose someone and then stick with that. And like that for me, uh, you see something in this guy on stage, and then you have him, and maybe he's a really bad actor in 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 a sense, but th th this is not the interesting question at the moment. Then you have, okay, we are here, we're going to work together. So it, uh, and there's a great, I think there's a great artistic value in that. You see what I mean? So, you think it's so a problem to, to, like to change the whole focus from, uh, to, to kind of take away, I think there's a lot of people and a lot of uh, will to take away these structures that focuses on uh, who's the best and who's the worst because also for me as a director I'm not so interested in who's good actor or not I can work with a really bad actor and it's it could be very interesting and very nice uh, if you see what I mean that it's, it's also what Fredrik talked about yesterday with this good and bad thing that you have just lots of different things lots of different starting points uh, I don't know if you have a question and to understand more about uh, each other's reality like for actors to know that filmmakers are constantly like having to finance and they are insecure and everything, uh, so that um, yeah, that maybe you can you can um, yeah, like I said, if you if you are someone having a good time creating something, it's I think it's a lot of things are possible to do to make your life cheaper in a period, so you are able to spend a lot of time practicing, like moving. Uh, away from Oslo, being in a farm outside, or something like that, you know. So I think my main point is that I think there's a big possibility to change. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that want to change and avoid these kind of selling situations, and that you, you can actually do this. Yeah, I appreciate this, uh, what you're talking about, this dilemma, and, but for example, in music, you know, a singer or something wants to get out there, there's really no way to reach a, a broader audience than, than that, uh, you know, outside of playing locally. So it, it becomes a real dilemma from that standpoint. I think my main point is that a lot of, uh, both artists, uh, it's like the question, who do I want to work with? Uh, when, when you get this selling uh, role going, then I'm always like, well, I don't want to do that. And also with musicians that I want uh, for me to listen to someone that is trying to sell themselves out there. It's like, it's no, there, there's not, uh, I'm not going to do that. Well, for example, if you saw a musician from Spain or from America that you would never hear, that, that kind of thing, how would you hear that person if they weren't on social media, you know? So yeah, but I mean, maybe then there's, I mean, looking for other ways to, to um, position yourself as an artist, so that for me it's not, I, uh, maybe maybe then I'm not going to aim for working at the National Theatre as a starting point, that, that's not what I want to do if, if it's about coming there and selling my brand and so on, that, but they, because there are a lot of people uh, interested in uh, seeing art and experiencing art, and that maybe this, this uh, who's the best and this selling thing is aimed at some institutions and some part of the art scene uh, but you can go total other ways also yeah. but in Norway most uh, institutions theater institutions don't have much additions no. they use the people who work there or people they know so uh, it's not much like selling in well in theater in Norway it's yeah. different movie in film but like in especially in Norway um, there's few editions at theaters for productions. Yeah, I just said this. The, the point I think is interesting is that outside of this hierarchy of the distribution of the state and the talent and the competence and all that machine that we are here a part of, there is, uh, there is a sort of trying to reach out, try to bypass. 
And I think that's why it was, it's interesting, because when you try to bypass, you, you know, you go in a, uh, how do you do that? You know, and, and, and it, uh, it's like, is it the focus to sort of uh, reach as many people as possible and, and become visible so that you can move on a vertical way, or is to create your own parallel universe where you have your own standard of what's good and not good, what is success or not success? I mean, but, but all this, this energy is going from the r sort of rebelling from this from mm -hmm. these main classical structures that have been established in uh, post-modernistic and uh, modernist in modernistic time, you know, with uh, and especially with uh, in Europe, you know, with the state and the state financing art and things like that. It's a very interesting conversation, and thank you so much for, for uh, being here. One last here. question. Yes, you have time for that. Uh, it's a question about um, what you talked about authenticity and the kind of uh, how to keep your artistic integrity. Um, within your different expertise. Um, what I'm wondering is, uh, um, what are you, uh, how do you work with an actor student or professional actor to make them find their authenticity or um, um, work with their vulnerabil vulnerability in a way that um, is, um, can help them? not become a barrier um, in, the, in the making. And um, why I'm asking is that because what, uh, how we're trained in this school is uh, collaborating in a longer process to kind of um, find your authenticity in the, or, or the truth in the production. When you're working like with the movies or, or in um, the self, or, video blogging, I guess the, you need to have it there much quicker. You need to work much quicker and you need to, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think you necessarily need to have it much quicker, but maybe, I think I try to make the actor feel like they can uh, trust me that I will film until I find something I really uh, like and uh, that it's okay if it takes a lot of time and I also find every like you said I can work with the bad like I I think everyone is interesting <laughs> if you if you um, but that depends on the project sometimes you want something that has especially that energy and you search for someone who gives you that feeling but at the same time I really like to have a lot of people in the picture creating a chaos and and have my <coughs> techniques for uh, staying in chaos for such a long time that everyone is authentic. So, and then I edit myself. So if someone is, uh, uh, <laughs> if I don't believe in something, I just edit it away. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, you know, in a sense, like the authenticity of the human being, the the actor him or herself, with the character, where where those the realities mesh creates a, a truth and and to work towards that and, and to eliminate the fear from being able to connect those two creates a performance that I, I, even if the, as this gentleman was saying the, the bad actors you can find a, a kind of way to get there um, where there's a truth that's manifest shall we say <laughs> but I think m being interested in the now and being like we we have one wonderful actress I've worked with a lot in a project now and she's just doing different things all the time making uh, everything living uh, I guess that's what directors and we are interested in something happening now that feels real so um, and sometimes you get a lot of help on that, like it's fantastic. And sometimes you have to uh, make f make people relax. And and I think that's a director's job to really make them relax in every way we can. Um. I think we have to stop here because otherwise you won't have enough lunch time. Uh, thank you so much for today. Thank you to me and Marike and, and Paul. 
And uh, tonight we have the reading uh, or the uh, sort of the launch of the book of Einstein. And I hope I will see you there and have a good workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.